I'll be doing the next presentation on, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some design guidance that we have been working on uh, with NRCS. And actually, it's going to uh, turn, it's going to be a really good segue into our final presentation that we're going to have here in just a few moments. I'm kind of giving the, uh, the, the, the sky view, so the, the, the big picture view. And then when Mark comes up to speak, he's going to give more of the, uh, let's look at the nuts and bolts of a particular technology and see what works. So, so we'll, with that, I'll just go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Jeff Porter, and I am the team leader for the animal manure and nutrient management team located here in Greensboro with NRCS and uh, Sandy Means and, and myself. We make up the team, and we do have nationwide responsibility for... Uh, all manure management issues related to NRCS. I don't know if I need this or not, but I'll put it on anyway. So as, as we, we talk here today, just, again, I want to just look a little bit at some of these uh, design guidance. And if I could, I put together a little handout to go along with this. Could I just start it here and just kind of move it around? I'd appreciate that. Many of you have probably seen something similar to this, kind of the... Uh, I know one of the things that Shannon talked about was, was kind of the, the gate to gate and we have some boundaries and, and that's the same thing as we're looking from this design guidance uh, standpoint. We have a lot of inputs, a lot of outputs, a lot of things happening on a farm. And as you're working with, with landowners, as you're working with the, 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 the different livestock operations, you have to take into account all these things. What's coming in, what's coming on, out, and what kind of balances do you have? Do you have some losses as well? And how do you take those into account? So you have to look at all of this as you're working with your landowners. And so, so you say, okay, what's the problem? Well, do we have a problem? You know, as, as we, we are we're hearing, you know, like in the Chesapeake Bay, we're hearing down in the Mississippi area, the River Basin, we're hearing all over the country, we, we have an issue. We have a problem. Well, is the problem excess nutrients? And you're sitting there and you scratch your head, you know, if you, if you have it just in a small boundary, it could be, that's what you're looking at, could be excess nutrients in that small boundary. Uh, do we have too many animals? You know, have you ever thought about that? Maybe within the boundary, maybe the concentration of the animals is, is giving us some, some issues. Well, I guess what, what I would like to propose to you today, and, and many of you maybe have heard me speak a little bit on this, and we talk, and, and I believe that uh, Kelly talked a little bit about it yesterday. We have, it, it's not necessarily too many animals or excess nutrients, but we have a distribution problem. How do we get the nutrients where they need to go? How do we get the nutrients to the, the location where the crops are coming off so we can get those nutrients back on the land where they came from? So that's what I want to talk a little, about, uh, a little bit about today as we look at some of these design guidance ideas. So how do we decide? How do we decide what technologies, technology or technologies would work best for a particular operation, a particular uh, facility, uh, different livestock types? Well, there, there's all kinds of different things. And, and one of the first things that I would look at is uh, what are the goals and the objectives of that landowner? What do they want? What are their desires? What are, what are their hopes to accomplish? Because if we're not helping the landowner meet those goals, whatever technology that we decide to work with them on, it's not going to happen. Or it's not going to work efficiently because it's not their idea. And that's why the last session I, I talked about during our CNMP planning process is that you meet with the landowner. You talk with the landowner. You understand what their objective, objectives, their desires, and their goals are. Also, what are the regulatory requirements? What, what do you have within your state? Because it's going to be different from state to state to state. So the technologies that you choose may be dependent on what those regulations are. Uh, what, what's the size of the operation? You know, we start throwing the economies of scale in here. Large operations might be able to handle a certain technology. But you get down to smaller operations, they may not be able to pencil that out to where it's going to work for them. Also, what is the type of operation? Not just the size. I mean, if we're dealing with uh, poultry versus swine, you're probably going to be looking at different technologies to address the resource concerns that you have because you have different manure types. So you have to handle those manure types a little bit differently. Well, how about your staff? 
What kind of staff do you have? How many numbers do you have? How are you going to make this work? So can they take on new responsibilities? Can they take on these new tasks? Can, can they become a, a digester operator? Do they have the skills to do that? And, and you have to work through those things with those landowners. How much land's available? The spread. Do you have enough land to apply all your nutrients? How much is required? Are you in balance? How far are you from water bodies? That can have an impact as to what type of application and practice that you're going to go with. And then the, the, the last one I just want to throw in here, and there's so many, many more. These are just, just some that, that I've, I've come up with. How much is this thing going to cost? That's the bottom line when you're working with landowners. Uh, you, you know, it, it may cost you know five hundred thousand dollars. Well, but are they going to get any revenue afterwards? What kind of revenue stream are you going to be able to develop or create from that? So you, those are things that you discuss with the landowner. Uh, some of you have seen this. This is something that Terry showed yesterday. As we are working with landowners, determining what kind of practices and applications we want to go with, we try to figure out, okay, where do they want to apply that technology? Do they want to do it in a treatment area? Is it how we're going to transfer it? Is it the way we store it? Or how is it going to be utilized? So you take all those things into account, those again go back to the objectives of the landowner as to what direction they want to go, and that will help provide the guidance when you use something like this, this little worksheet that I passed out. Talk about some of the different options, and uh, we probably will not get through all these slides, because I've got someone here who's going to cut me off at a certain time, so I'll we'll make sure I try to get at least through some of them. Agronomic practices, let's not forget the agronomic side. There is still a huge opportunity dealing with agronomics. We also have biological types of treatments, we have chemical treatments, physical, and then there are other things that you can look at. This first sentence here, or first bullet, really kind of shocked me when I really started thinking about it. And, and we get to areas like in, in the Chesapeake Bay, we think, oh, well, we just don't have enough land. Well, folks, understand that we are currently only applying manures on 5% of our crop land. 5%. That means we have 95% of our cropland still available out there somewhere. So that's why I go back to my, my uh, uh, assumption that it's a distribution issue. We've got to get it to where the cropland is. Land application is still very important. It's still very viable. And that's, in my mind, I say, let's look at that first. Can we deal with land application first? And then what do we have left over? And then focus on that. Uh, just some different things that you can do, you know, the way that you apply it. You know, are you injecting? Are you just doing surface applications? Uh, here we have, this is kind of a, something that's being evaluated, is actually a solid manure injection system. So hopefully we can get something like that going. You know, what kind of impact does a, a big gun have? Again, you have to think about these things when you're working with the landowner. Dealing with cover crops, crop rotations. Now, we're really going to go, this is going to be a whirlwind tour here, folks, as we go through these. Uh, we're going to look at you know, some of the biological activities. You know, have anaerobic digestion. We've, we've been talked about that in several of the presentations. Aerobic treatment. Dealing with anaerobic treatment. Uh, composting. Again, a lot of these are dealing with your nitrogen, especially the, the last three. What kind of impacts that going to have on nitrogen? <coughs> so as you look at the digestions, these are just some of the, the different types that are out there. And, and we're, we're seeing all kinds of things. I know that DVO has the, the, the mixed plug flow, so I don't have a picture of, of, of one of theirs, but it, it's, it's one that kind of fits between the complete mix and the plug flow. But, but we have different options, different alternatives. Again, as you work with the landowner, you've got to see if they want anaerobic digestion, you've got to see what's going to fit for their system. What's the consistency of their manure? What are they going to do with it? Does it make sense to do digestion? And that's one of the things, you know, I'll ask them, you know, why do you want to do it? Well, my neighbor's doing it. Well, let's talk about this some more. Just because they're doing it doesn't mean you need to be doing it. Uh, dealing with composting. We have different, different systems of composting, and we've also talked about this as as uh, you know, dealing with the, 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 the wind rows, how much nitrogen are you losing through that, and, and some of those types of things, mortality composting. I just want to show you a, a little comparison. 
And this is kind of unique here in North Carolina, and I think some of the other states are thinking about it. And Tara, I want to make sure I get this right. Uh, if, if you look at this system here on the bottom, this would be like a traditional bins. Oh, man. We're running out of time. Traditional bins. <clears throat> and for this operation, we're looking at maybe about between 30 and 40 bins they would need to deal with the normal mortality. But then if, if you go with the forced air system, which would be this one here, they're getting it down to like five to seven bins. So you're, you're, you, as you work with them, you've got to talk about you know, some of these options. Are, are they willing to, to spend all the, the labor time that's going to take to do all these, these the number of bins versus the, the reduced number of bins, but there's additional costs, there are other things that you have to take into account. But again, these are discussion items that you have with the landowner. Thermal chemical or, or chemical applications, you know, coagulation, flocculation, uh, manure amendments. Uh, you know, I, I just, I love looking at that picture. Don't you just love flocculating <laughs> manure? Isn't that just one of your favorite things to see? But, but it, it shows what you can do. You know, you've got your DAFs and you have other things using your chemicals. You can uh, just, that's just a picture. I need to frame that one. But, but these other things, using the polymers, using your metal salts, you can see the impacts that those can have on, on separating your solids out. So this is a way of enhancing some of your other applications. It's not cheap. And that's one of the issues with that. You've got to work with the landowners, see if they understand that. Manure amendments. You know, as we're seeing in putting, you know, some of, some of the, the material like uh, alum or uh, ferric sulfate or some of these other things on, on this, the surface in these, these poultry operations, we got to understand that the, the operations have changed. And this is one of the things that, you know, I, I remember when this was first established, you know, what were our birds? Four pounds. Do you know what size the birds are now? Nine, ten pounds. So we can't use the same application rate to keep our ammonia down. Because our birds are now more than double the size they were just 10, 15 years ago because of what the public wants. So you have to work with the landowners. How do we address these types of things? Uh, thermal chemical, you know, some of the, the issues that I, I, or technologies that I look at is uh, incineration, gasification, pyrolysis. These are some of the, the typical type of systems. And I'll just quickly show you some of those. We've, we've had a lot of systems that we've been sampling and testing across the country. Uh, these are kind of looking at the low-hanging fruit for the most part of, of our drier manures, our poultry litters, uh, dry cattle manure, some of those types of things. Uh, this is a, a pyrolysis unit uh, that we have in, uh, that was up in Virginia that they did some analysis on. And here you were able to get multiple products of bio-oil, which was discussed. Uh, we also have the syngas and biochar, different things we can go with there. Uh, physical applications, we do have you know, solid liquid separation, pelletizing. We have different, uh, again, are we going to enhance it with chemicals or not? And you can see the, the different applications there. If you add chemicals, then you can do different things. You might be able to separate a higher percentage of the, the solids, a higher percentage of the nitrogen and the phosphorus. And that's what we're seeing in, in these particular applications here. Uh, dealing with sand. When you've got a dairy, you know, are they using sand or are they using uh, manure solids? That, that has an impact. So again, we're seeing the different types of beddings. Uh, this is one that's kind of interesting, and I call it solid-solid separation. And, and what you're doing here is that you're using like a, a poultry litter, and you are separating the coarse from the fines. And what they're, they're finding is that you're getting more of your woody products the, the litter or, or, or the, the shavings are in the, the coarse material and you're getting more of the, the fine material which could, could potentially have higher nutrient levels in your fines and you can do different things with, with those two different products. So that, that has a way of reducing volume and then you might be able to do some additional applications between those two fractions. Uh, pelletizing, uh, you can come up with different markets with those pellets and, and by pelletizing you're furthering the reduction of the volume and you're able to move something a farther distance. Quickly, other options, and we don't we don't talk about this much, like feed management. What can we do from a feed standpoint? Uh, early slaughter. You know, the older the animal gets, the less efficient they are in feed conversion. So maybe early slaughter is something to think about. And you know, number three is, is almost a taboo. You, you don't ever say this, 
We're going to move animals from place A to place B. It's about move the animals from where, where they are to where the food is being produced. Just a thought. Uh, then we have uh, other products, fiberboard. If you're looking forward one day, you're probably going to be able to get your entertainment center that's made of manure board. Won't that just be delightful? Uh, I've seen the cow pots. Uh, finish up with this slide right here. This kind of shows traditional, and actually, uh, Dr. Vinodi showed this picture earlier today. Uh, we, we have this was kind of the advanced technology, kind of taking from the municipal waste system to this was the, the traditional manure treatment with the, the lagoon. So you can see difference in size, but there's also a difference in cost. Wrapping up, conclusion there is no silver bullet, folks. You're going to have, if this was easy, it would be done already. And it's not. We still have a long ways to go. There are a lot of different options out there, and we work with, with different folks. Work a lot with the technology providers to see how we can help landowners meet their goals. And, and do remember, most of these will have a significant financial investment. And then you have to figure out, how do we deal with that? With that, I will we'll wrap it up. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, Bill. So you mentioned uh, cost being one of the most significant uh, things to the producer. Um, I guess my question would be, is that, is that capital cost? Is that cost per animal? Or is that cost per environmental benefit? And do you discuss those things? Well, those are things that do need to be discussed because it really comes down to the bottom, the bottom dollar for the landowners. How much is it going to cost me? Capital. There's going to be the capital cost of putting this thing in. But then if, if, if there's a market and we can say, well, we can offset that cost by you know doing A, B, or C, then maybe that's that's something that, that they would be interested in doing. But those discussions need to take place. You don't just say that's going to cost you five hundred thousand and then you leave. You've got to discuss, you know, what options are available and then where we can go from there. But that, that's usually, when I talk with the landowner, it's the capital cost for, for them to, to put in that practice. The point of failure is operating cost as well. They may get it in and start working with it, and if they can't keep up with the operating cost, that, that, is, that is definitely an issue because, well, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, a dairy producer, they want to do what? They want to produce milk. Uh, if you're a hog producer, you want to produce pork chops. If, if you are a poultry producer you or a broilers, you, you want to have chicken legs. I mean, that, that's what you want to do. And, and if the technology, are they going to maintain the technology or are they going to deal with the animals first? What's going to happen? They're going to the animals, aren't they? So the, the operation maintenance costs, those can definitely come in and play a, play a large role. I'm going to close it off from there. I'm going to introduce our last speaker. Because I know y'all are ready to, to hear this. It's got some great stuff here.